This is one for you guys who have an interest in history. This I bought this from a dealer in Lithuania. It is a really old Russian lock. And on Russian locks, it's really unusual to see any kind of uh, embellishment or ornamentation. And this one does. It has it right here. A little cutout window. And when you look at this guy, I don't know if you can make that out, but it says actually uh, 30 years October 1947. 30 years, 1947. So what happened in October 1917? And I went to a public school, but geez, even I know that. The October Russian Revolution, 1917. So this is a commemorative lock for that. Very cool. Unfortunately, I got it without a key. And this was the picture that I saw. Actually, that was the picture I saw. They didn't want to give anything away. Uh, it is obviously very, very pitted pretty badly on the back. It does look like it's been used somewhere, and I would love to know the story. I wish this lock could talk. But when we flip this little weather cover out of the way, all of a sudden we start to see a little nastiness. My hopes of getting it picked kind of plummeted. Uh, this is a huge, huge keyway. It is also a piped keyway. You know, we have a shaft down there, a little stud right in the center that's going to block any of our keys. So I needed a piped tensioner. So the biggest blank I had is this ERA that Andy Mack gave me, and it's not quite big enough. It does kind of wedge on there, but I'd, I could probably drill out the shaft of this a little bit. But unfortunately, I'm not going to do that because there's a tremendous gap here, and it's, this was a huge key. It probably measured about an inch from the shaft to the bottom of the keyway, and this just wouldn't be able, when I turned it and ground everything off, it wouldn't be long enough to engage the tensioner on the back of this. The terminal end would not be able to fit up inside of the talon on the back of this lock. Just wouldn't do it. So I'm trying to figure out how to open it. So I got to digging through my blank keys. And I, I was in an antique shop in Elkton, Virginia, where I bought a railroad lock. But I also bought a few of these keys. I don't know, don't know why I bought them until today. Um, this is about the right if you line it up, it's about the right length, so very huge key. It's a steel shaft, and on the end of this, it's a pot metal tip with, the, of course, where all the bidding goes. This is a blank. Uh, this is all pot metal, so pretty soft, but it's embedded on that steel shaft. So what I'm thinking, unfortunately, it's a solid shaft. What I'm thinking is I can grind this off, I can align it with the drill press, and then drill down inside of this shaft. It's, it's pretty beefy here. And I think I can drill it large enough to fit on the stud on this piped lock. And I believe then we will have a tensioner. So that's step one. Let me try to do that. And hopefully you'll see more of this video. If not, I'm going to throw this thing in the naughty bucket and he'll live there until I can find an antique Russian key to go along with this thing. Let's give it a shot, though. This has not worked out very well at all. It turns out that the center portion of this key, the shaft, and it goes all the way to the end is, is some kind of soft steel. And then this round part is very cheap cast metal of some kind. But you can see it's already failing. Um, I did try to tension it, and that's what happened. Um, this The tensioning part is held on by this thin strip of steel on the top, so it it does bend very easily. I was able to get it, if I can get it to work one last time. I can align it with the tensioner. Supposedly right there. It does align, but I just can't put any rotational pressure. I can't tension this lock. You can see how much flex there is. And it's just, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's just that tip. Yeah, see how much I bent it? Just this little thin strip of steel right there that's keeping this thing from breaking off. This was total failure. All right, this is not going to work. I need to find another way to get in this lock. Let's see what else I can come up with. You know, I really did have high hopes for this. I had no idea the center section of this was some kind of steel and then that outer part was some kind of cheap cast stuff, but... Got to make do. So I tried another little piece of magic, and I found the thickest piece of piano wire that I had, and I formed a little loop in here. And the loop, of course, is to go around that piece of piping. 
and slides in, works it in there. And then I try tensioning it like this. And this is actually my third wire. <laughs> and so that ought to give you a clue. This isn't going to work either. Because when I, even when you apply really strong tension on the wire and get it to move around and then it will allow you to fit a pick in there, the wire starts to bend and undo your loop. It just pinches actually on that piece of piping. doesn't allow you to put any tension on the, on the lock no matter how much you twist this wire. I twist the first two of them until they broke. So this in theory is a good idea. Just didn't work out. So on with more magic. And now I'm going to escalate things. I have a piece of one inch by one quarter inch aluminum bar here. Uh, this is wide enough so I can drill myself a hole in there that will match the piece of piping on this old Russian lock. And then, I've already drawn it on here, then I'll put it on the milling machine and mill out all that. I'm just going to leave myself the tensioner and then something to put inside of my tensioning clamp to slide that in there. So we'll have a homemade tensioner. Now it is just a little bit wide, as I said, a quarter inch, so there's a constriction right there, that waist where it narrows. I'm probably going to have to narrow it just a little bit, but hopefully this aluminum bar will have enough strength that I can twist it and tension this lock so I can squeeze one of these guys in there. Anyway, let me put this on a milling machine and let's see what we can come up with. All right, guys, I know it doesn't look like much. This is my second attempt at a prototype. When I drilled the hole on the first one and then I started filing it down, trying to fit it into the keyway, I filed through and then I twisted it off. I did manage to get it out of lock, and this, of course, is the second try. Um, I did have to put a little waste in it there to fit it into the keyway, and I think I've got this filed within a hair's width of hitting that chamber right up in here. I only drilled it about an inch and a quarter, so let's see if we can make it work. I did fit it into the keyway, and I made sure there was clearance for the wire, but I did not pick it. And it does fit, and what I did notice is I do have to... Let me turn it a little bit here. I've got to kind of pull it out a little bit and then rotate it. Come on, baby. And then push on it while I turn a little more and then it slides right in and I can feel it tensioning. Um, if you look at the shackle, and this is how I know I got it right, when I pull up on the shackle and I turn the tensioner, you can see it moving just a little bit. That tells me I'm tensioning it, tensioning the locking bar. Um, I, when you rotate it back out, it just slides out. What I suspect is that this might just be a little bit long, but I'm really hesitant to file any more of it off because then I'd be starting over again, be another hour or so. So I'll just have to work with jiggling it a little bit. I'm going to just use a normal wire that I got from Andy Mac. So let me slide this in there, slide the wire, turn the wire and everything, and then pull the wire towards the face. Oops, get in there towards the face of the lock so it doesn't interfere. And now I'm just going to do that jiggling thing. Come on. Come on. Oh, a little more awkward with the wire in it. Okay, I think, make sure we're tensioning it, and we are. Okay. I uh, will reach around the camera between the tripod. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to work from the side like this. All right, pretty extraordinary. Oh, the tensioner's in there wrong now. Turn him like that. Come on, baby. That's the advantage of having a flag on the handle so you know which way your tip is pointing. So now I know the tip is pointed to the left. Now we'll try it. Like I said, it's locked and probably has been for the last 71 years. All right, even the uh, levers have some pretty substantial springs on them. I'm trying not to bend the wire too much. So you guys who are putting super springs inside of challenge locks weren't the first. Somebody 71 years ago thought of it first. Come on, baby. If I break this key, I have a piece of steel. That's the next try. There's a lot of goop in there. I did squirt some WD-40, hoping to loosen some of that junk up. That lever's good. Come on, baby. 
Don't break. Don't break. I also have a die grinder I could use. That was a nice little click. Oh, there's a very slight turn of the core right there. I'm putting more tension, not quite open though. So maybe there's a false gate in this old lock. Well, I got more of a turn right there on lever number two. Feels like there's only four. But they really are. Got a powerful spring on them. Must have been a massive steel, thick steel key. Oh, there we go. Nope, we're stuck. Either that's a false gate. Doesn't want to turn anymore. Huh, yeah, there's why. Because we're open. All right. But now I got bad news. I can no longer, I can't rotate this, it doesn't go any further, and I can't, he doesn't want to come back either. So, I may have to reverse pick him. I really would like to get a lock. Uh, look at the locking paw. So, let's flip it over here real quick. There's a lot of stuff in there, look at that garbage. Man, that thing is full of greased up got pig poop in there some animal hair goodness gracious all right let's try to let's try to reverse pick it i really would like to get a look at the locking paw um i'm gonna have to reach above it it's not ideal but i really don't have a good angle guys i'm sorry about this okay there's there's number two again. I knew it was number two, and he gave us a false set. And now we're locked again. All right. Now that I know how it's bitted, come on, come on. Let's take a look at that locking paw. Huh. That is not nearly as massive. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll put the lock cam in there. It's not nearly as massive as what I thought it was going to be. Let me get a better light. I don't know if that's any better or not, but uh, it's a very thin locking paw that locks into this little hole here. So that's what it's all about. It must be kind of like a beak where it comes and turns and catches through this little slot to hold it instead of a cutout like I thought it was. Very cool old lock. I really wish I had a key for it, but... Nobody's opened this thing probably since 1947, but today we did it. Probably the first time we've opened a 30-year celebration of the 1917 Russian Revolution lever lock on YouTube. First opening, <laughs> and probably the last. There aren't too many of these out there, I don't think. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Appreciate your support. Stay safe, and of course, stay legal. This is awesome. Now i got to pick it again in order to get it locked. Oh, well, that's what I'll do with the rest of my day. Each of these videos takes four to six hours to record, edit, and publish, so I'd really appreciate it if you show your support by subscribing and clicking on the like button. Thanks, guys.